I'm not ready yet. What is up today guys? Today we're doing it again. We're going at it again. Here we go. Okay, you ready for this? We're going to talk about art history. This was my month 12 from Full Sail University's computer animation degree program from Full Sail University. So let's go and talk about this. We're going to talk about some class information, some assignments, a little bit about the teacher, some tips. going to end with an in short and uh, that'll be that. And then we're going to find out what class we're taking next month and go on let's go all right so class information this is probably going to be one of my shortest videos in terms of a full sale experience because it was a very uneventful class there's no like super creative projects there's nothing that your typical full sale class has had so far and this is what i kind of worried about going into this class i think i mentioned it in my last video i think my next class is art history which i really Hope is not like Picasso and Da Vinci and Michelangelo and Renaissance-like stuff. That stuff has never interested me. I hope it's not, but honestly, I'm expecting it to be. The way I see it, there's probably going to be two sides that um, people will fall on in terms of this class. You're either going to really like it or you're going to be one that says, can we just get through it? It's four weeks. We can do it, I think. I more or less fell on this side where I was like, ah, here we go again. We got to do another history project there weren't even really projects now you got to understand i have never been one to like history of things very little history has ever really interested me and there are going to be some people out there that love history they're history buffs and they're just going to love this class love every minute of it every reading every paper all that every discussion you're, you're going to love it for me i'm not that kind of person i don't like reading i don't like i'm not going to say i don't like writing because i like to write but i like creative writings that don't have factual sources or APA style or anything like that, which you're gonna have to do in this class. So if you like reading and writing and writing papers and APA style stuff, you're gonna like this class. If you're more like me where you'd rather work on a hands-on project or you'd rather model something or animate something, you're gonna be like, come on, Come on, it's just four weeks. I, I suppose I can make it through. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be one of those classes for you. Let me give you some class information. That was more of like a debriefing of what the class is gonna be like. Now class information. 11 assignments throughout the month. One is your um, professionalism, and then you the others are just sprinkled in throughout the weeks. Every week, there's a whole bunch of readings you gotta do from a virtual textbook. They give you the link to download and all that good stuff. There's really not a lot to talk about in terms of class information. You're reading out of a book, you're doing quizzes, you're doing discussions, and um, it's really all you can expect. So we're just gonna jump into assignments and move on. Oh, last thing in um, the, the class information. Your lectures are Tuesdays at like 7.30 at night. So what I did was I just waited for the recorded lecture to be uploaded Wednesday and I started then. Majority of the days, I got my homework done on Wednesdays. So it's a super easy class, don't stress it. Okay, so let's start talking about assignments. Uh, what can you expect in each week and stuff like that. In the first week, you have five chapters in this book that you gotta read. And this first week is all about prehistoric art. So, you know, your cave paintings, your Egyptian stuff, stuff like that. And then you have a discussion question. Your initial post is due Wednesday, but your peer response is not due till Sunday. I understand why they do that, just so that everyone's forced to get it in then, and then people can just peer response whenever they they have time but I'm like dang it just because it made me rush on Wednesdays but honestly not a bad thing because if you're forced to get it done Wednesday you're not like eh push it off till Sunday at 6 p.m. you know one of those kind of things I suppose it's good and then other people have already done their response most of the time anyway on Wednesday so you can just do your peer response and that whole assignment is checked off you got nothing to do in terms of that before Sunday you're all good. But then aside from the five chapters you gotta read, the lecture you should watch, and the discussion, the only other thing you have to do in week one is a virtual art tour. Now, what is that? Basically what it is, it's like 20 questions or so. Um, I don't think any of them were multiple choice. I'm pretty sure that they were all essay format, but it was more like just write a paragraph and call it good. That's that. It took me, how long did that assignment take me? That assignment took me a little over six hours, so. I mean, it's a hefty assignment, but it's not a hard assignment, okay? You just 
just know that and just make sure you write your paragraphs well. In your discussion, you are gonna have to cite your source um, and your source will always be your book. They give you an APA sheet on how to cite stuff. Super easy, just kinda follow the instructions. <laughs> Shoot, this is a very boring video. I'm sorry guys, but there's not much to talk about in terms of this class. There's just not. It's gonna be a short one. Shoot, okay, let's just keep going. So week one took me 10 hours, 32 minutes. Um, I could have gotten it all done on Wednesday, but I, I slack off a lot, especially when I know that there's not a lot of pressure like in this class. Just, just kind of keep that in mind. It's not hard at all. Um, and shoot, I didn't really do any of the readings this month aside from half of the first chapter which was prehistoric art in Europe. Yeah, because when you watch the lecture, they go over so many things that are in your discussion question and in your art tour and in your quizzes that shoot, you don't even need to really read. I mean, read if you want additional information, but it's not completely necessary. If I could avoid reading this boring stuff, I did. And like I said, if you love history, you're gonna wanna read, cause this is A Brief History of Art. I think the book title is Art, A Brief History, or something like that. Ah, shoot, I just don't like history in general. Not that I don't like it, I just don't find it interesting. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you can relate, you're probably gonna feel the same way about this class that I do. If you love history, you're gonna love this class. Okay, moving on to week two. Week two, you have, once again, five chapters to read. Once again, I didn't read them because I got all the information I needed from my lecture. I mean, it's, it's that simple. And once again, you had a discussion question talking about, I think, art patronage, patronage, Patreon, no, it's not Patreon. Patronage, yeah, that's that. And yeah, sorry I don't have pictures to display up here, but I just don't, there's nothing really to display. I didn't create a picture this month or anything. Sorry about the lack of visuals. Then what? So in week two, there actually was a big assignment, 15% of your grade, and that is a visual analysis paper. Now, I've never, <laughs> this this video sounds really depressing, like, oh, I hate this class, it's the worst thing ever, but no, it's super easy, uh, barely an inconvenience, oh, sorry, sorry, screen rant, shoot, I watched a pitch meeting before this, my bad, guys. What's your name, Ryan George? Sorry, um, but I, I doubt you're ever gonna see this. I got off topic. Okay, so yeah, week two, there's a visual analysis paper. I've never liked visual analysis because visual analysis APA, you have to explain what the artist meant by this, but not add any personal interpretations. Like, I think it means this. No, you have to say, they meant this, and this eagle is meant to soar high and bring wisdom to the land on which its wall that it is painted on is standing or something like that. You can't add, I think that eagle looks cool. Um, no, not how it works. Okay, so for your visual analysis paper, they give you a link to a Google Arts art gallery thing. You pick three pictures there and then you just talk about them. You gotta talk about two formal elements and two principles of design within the piece. Um, I think it's like a 200 word minimum for each picture and you have to do three pictures, but I had like 1700 words, so it's gonna be really easy to meet that minimum. And then you're gonna have to look for like name of the piece, name of artist, the size of the piece. As long as you follow the rubric basically, as long as you nail each point, or at least include it, you're probably gonna get pretty close to 100. Just don't have any like grammatical errors or spelling errors or anything like that. And you'll be fine, cause I got 100 on this and it's super easy. And I only spent like six hours on it, so not that bad. Then the last thing you gotta do in week two is a quiz. It's an open book quiz, 20 questions, multiple choice. Sounds extremely easy, right? Well, there's something difficult about it, not really, but kind of. There might be 15 or so questions where it's like just typed. And then the last five questions or so, it's a picture and it's like identify the style. This quiz is over both weeks one and two information. So it's everything from like prehistoric cave painting art, Egyptian art, up to week two's content, which is like medieval and Renaissance stuff. Once again, I know that it's my cup of tea, but you guys already know that by now. Even though it was open book, the picture ones are the ones that got me. Cause I was looking in the book for these pictures and I could not find the style to save my life. So I got a 70 on the quiz. So I missed six questions. So I was like, huh, I couldn't find them in the book. Maybe I just missed them and I probably did just miss them. Still found it interesting, but a 70% on that quiz. Quiz is worth 5%, so it only docked me like one and a half percent total in my grade. Not bad. But yeah, then my total time for week two was eight hours and 49 minutes. Um, I think I started it Wednesday and I got done with it by like Friday or something like that. Super easy, guys.
Moving on to week three. Week three is modern art. And you once again have five chapters you need to read. And once again, I didn't read them because I just watched the lecture and uh, we were good. So what did you have to do? Week three was extremely, extremely light. The lecture took up a third of my time that I spent working in week three. Boom. So week three, once again, you have your discussion post. It's like social and political, social and political commentary and art. Week three's discussion got kind of political because I saw a lot of Trump stuff. You know, take that for what it is. It's a political discussion. Try not to get offended or anything. I'm pretty sure everything in there was lighthearted. I didn't read everything. It was like, pick an image in your book and how did this directly respond to a social movement or a political issue of the time it was made? And then where it got kind of political in some areas was the third part of the discussion post. What role do images play nowadays in social media and politics? So, of course, you're going to see a lot of Trump meme-related responses and stuff like that. So, try not to get offended by anything. It's all lighthearted. That's that. So, once again, that was due Wednesday at midnight. And your peer response is not due till uh, Sunday at midnight. But I just did them both on Wednesday because why not? Now, aside from the discussion post, you only have one other thing to do for week three, and that is tell your professor what you would like your topic to be for your week four project. Now, this project is a Google Arts Gallery. You're gonna take the Google Arts Gallery link that they give you, compile 10 images that all fall under one category, and create a, a gallery of them. Like, what's your gallery title? description of your gallery but for week three you're simply just telling your professor your gallery theme so my theme was Norse mythology because I was like I like Marvel characters I like Thor Loki Heimdall Surtur uh, Odin so I'll do Norse mythology because it's all because it's not all just Marvel stuff it is based on Norse mythology so it's like a one sentence kind of type it out and send it through and there's your one percent of your grade that's due Wednesday at midnight too so all of your homework is due Wednesday at midnight except for your peer response on the discussion, which is due Sunday at midnight. But if you just do it Wednesday, you have no homework for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Four days off. That was a great four days off for me, honestly. So total time for week three, I spent three hours and three minutes in week three. How great is that? Week four, non-Western art. Once again, five chapters to read. Once again, I didn't read them because I watched the lecture. So we're gonna start off with the assignment that carried over from week three, which was the Google Arts Gallery. And uh, once again, like I described just a second ago, compiled your 10 images from the link and you can't go to like Google Images and bring it in. It has to be images within the Google Arts Gallery. Compile 10 images that fall within your theme. Give your theme a title and a description. They want you to use artistic terminology in your title and description and uh, that's why I got a 95 on this project because I did not use those kind of terms I was just like Norse mythology gods goddesses and monsters by Jacob Fiesel and stuff like that So they probably wanted you to include some like formal elements principles of design and stuff like that make it a little more Professional I guess though. I spent about three and a half hours on this project. It wasn't hard at all the hardest part was once again, it was basically a baby visual analysis, like from week two. You had to write 50 word descriptions for each of your images in a Word doc and turn that in on FSO. Once again, the hardest part is, at least for me, knowing what the artist meant by the picture without adding my personal interpretation. You know what, I made it through 95 and that five was only because I didn't add a artistic terminology thing into the title or description. So I think you're gonna be fine. Just use the, the formal elements and principles of design document that they give you, super easy, and um, that's that. Your discussion for this week is super easy. Once you create your Google Arts Gallery, copy your link, paste it in the discussion, boom. There's your discussion post. Then you have until Sunday to peer response, someone's gallery. Now in the gallery, you cannot see their 50 word descriptions of each image. You just see the images and the title and the description. You're more or less just like, yes, all of your pictures fit your theme, fit your description. Uh, this is my favorite image and here's why. Here's the image that I think best represents your theme and here's why. Stuff like that, super easy. And then the last assignment is a quiz. It is over topics discussed in weeks three and four, so that's your modern art and your non-western art and once again like week two it's open book and there are a couple questions that are well they're all multiple choice but some that are just typed out and they're 
word responses that you gotta click the bubble or there's a picture and you're like okay what theme does this best represent is this is this modern is this contemporary it's all multiple choice it's all fairly easy I got a 90 on it just because once again I couldn't find a few pictures in the book I don't know if I'm missing them or if maybe there were separate things hidden within FSO that I didn't find but I don't know but I'm okay with a 90. Making my overall grade for the class at 97.3. I spent five hours, 51 minutes. Once again, got it all done Wednesday. Okay, so now let's talk about the teacher for a second. Okay, so my teacher's name was Audrey, and I'm not gonna give away the last name for like privacy reasons, but she was awesome. She responded to you fairly quickly on all your assignments, gave grades very quickly. If you had all the bullets and the rubrics um, in your assignment, she just checked them all off and you're like, awesome here's a 100 or something like that so she's a very easygoing teacher now in terms of your professors that are giving the lectures they switch in and out so there's probably a lot of people in art history um as a professor you basically had a new professor every week i don't know if they i don't know if some of them came back for a second time but yeah they were all fairly interesting to listen to and they all gave a lot of um good feedback and good lectures in the lectures like half of it was just like here are your assignments for the week and the other half was like let's talk about the materials for the week very very simple lecturing styles once again my professor she's awesome lots of responses and when she grades your homework she's like here's everything you did right but then she'll add something to it so that you learn more so if you did a piece on da Vinci she'll grade it give her response and then add a little fact or something about da Vinci it's kind of cool and then um that's kind of it for the teacher. So let's give some tips and then an in short and then let's get out of here. So tips, if I have any, um, shoot, I would say if you like history, you're going to love this class and you're going to want to read all of these. But if you don't like history or it just doesn't interest you as much as maybe the next person, you can go to your discussion, write down the questions it's asking you, then watch your lecture. And most of the time they will answer the questions there so that'll save you some time in terms of discussions but honestly guys there's just not much to talk about in terms of this class keep a punch list like I always do um, I think they're fun just to see how much time you put into stuff but um, shoot there's really not much here's another tip for you if you can do your peer response Wednesday it'll just you won't have to worry about it or even possibly forget about it for Sunday's turn in so do it Wednesday and you'll be good a uh, tip if your Wednesdays are free like mine are you can you can take Monday off you can sometimes even take Tuesday off do all your homework Wednesday you don't even have to watch the live lecture unless you have a question or something watch the recorded lecture Wednesday morning do your homework throughout the day and shoot, you can do nothing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Just have Wednesday be your homework day. That's kind of it for tips. So in short, 11 assignments throughout the month, lectures, uh, Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. or they'll be up on Wednesday morning. Five chapters to read every week or you can watch the lecture and it'll basically give you the necessary information to complete your assignments. Got virtual art tour, week one, discussion week one, discussion week two, quiz in week two over weeks one and two. Week three is extremely light. You got your discussion and then submit your topic for week four and that's that. Week four, Google Arts Gallery, discussion, which really isn't even a discussion. You just post your link and peer review someone else's Google Arts Gallery. Uh, quiz over weeks three and four and that's it. That is it for this class. Super easy. Okay, so there's really not much to stress about this. And I was lucky that I did shading and lighting in December. Had my three week break and then had art history it just eased me back into school so I imagine if you probably started January with shading and lighting or any difficult class that it was like boom because you were just chilling on Christmas break and then it's like boom 90 hours of work speaking of which total for this month I estimated about 40 and a half hours of work I put in 28 and some change hours of work you definitely won't go over 30 hours of work for this month shoot i know that there are some people out there that work 30 hours a week i'm one of them right here i really don't have much else to say in terms of art history now i thought my next class was going to be college mathematics because that's what it said online when i looked at the online schedule now it's saying i'm in project and portfolio three so that's probably what my next full sale experience video is going to be over because that's the class I'm in now. I guess that means I was scheduled to graduate in April of next year. So I guess that means that I will be graduating in March of next year. So that's cool. But I've got project and portfolio three this month 
that I just started. And then I think next month I'm in two classes at once. I think that's character modeling and then like a physical science or something like that. Shoot, that'll be tough taking two classes at once but we'll make it. First, we're gonna make through project and portfolio three, and then I will let you guys know about all that junk coming up later on. Just so I can see who made it to the end of this video. What was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? Mine was the end game trailer, hands down. I did not enjoy the commercials, but I'm really pumped about end game. So, Avengers Endgame was my favorite. What's your guys' favorite? Be nice. If your favorite was Andy Warhol eating Burger King, well then, good for you. So that's it for this one, guys. If you would please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys later.